Now that we have our app initialized, the second step is to create a proper ESLint configuration. That is a step that not a lot of people teach you, including myself. In my YouTube videos, I simply don't have time to go over the entire ESLint setup and a proper configuration. But in this course, as I've told you, you're going to learn everything from start to finish, including production needed resources such as this one. So let's go ahead and start with our ESLint. I'm going to open up my terminal by going to view terminal or just simply by using control and then tilde. Once you have it open, we can stop our current application from running by pressing control C and then Y. We can clear the console and now we can install ESLint. I'm going to do that by using npm. I'm going to say npm install and then dash G for global and then finally ESLint. This is going to install ESLint globally on your device so that you can use it across every single new project that you create. There we go. I already had ESLint installed, so the process went a bit more quickly for me. If it's still doing its thing for you, that's fine. Simply pause this video. So once this installs for you as well, we can clear the console. And finally, still being in the Filmfire directory, you can run ESLint space dash dash init. This is going to help you initialize the right ESLint config for you. So just follow my steps. We're going to click, we want to use ESLint to check syntax, find problems and enforce code styles. We will be using JavaScript modules, import export. We are using React in this project. There is gonna be no TypeScript and we'll be running the code in the browser. We want to use a popular style guide, more specifically the Airbnb one. And finally, we want to simply use JavaScript and ask you if you want to install them. And of course, our answer is going to be yes. This process is going to take a bit longer because it's installing all the necessary dependencies to help us write better code. So I'm going to pause the recording for a minute or two, and then we'll be right back. There we go, our ESLint has been installed successfully. You can see that there are some vulnerabilities, but that's not something you should be worried about because we are using this only in development. If you take a look here, all the ESLint dependencies are installed as dev dependencies. If you hover over this, you might get some more information, but basically dev dependencies are only used while you're developing a specific product and they're not going to be shipped into production. Now that our ESLint has been initialized, an ESLint RC configuration file has been automatically generated for us. As you can see, we have the plugin React recommended, also the Airbnb, but as you can see, we don't have any specific rules. For that reason, I'm going to give you my own ESLint configuration that I've compiled over years working in React.js. The entire ESLint RC is going to be just below this lecture, and you can simply copy and paste it. There we go. As you can see, we're gonna have just a few more rules about import, console logs, the maximum length of a specific line, and so on. But you don't really have to worry about this because ESLint will. So now that you import this, you can save the file and we can go ahead and check how our files are holding up. Do we have any errors in them? If you wrote our index.js like this, you shouldn't have any errors we can go to our app.jsx and you can see already, although it might have seemed that this file looked correctly to us, ESLint is already complaining. It's saying you're missing a semicolon here, you're missing it here as well. And this here, unexpected block statement surrounding arrow body, move the return value immediately after the arrow. So basically it's saying, you just have the return here. Why not just instantly return it like this? You don't need the return statement. And you can see it just makes it a lot more streamlined. So if you're working in teams, ESLint is always going to tell everybody from the team, you have to do this, this, and this. That way, everybody is always going to be up to date with the highest possible code standards. So what I did is I just pressed Control S and it immediately saved it. Now, for some of you, this might not happen automatically. So let's go ahead and set it up we're going to press control shift P or command shift P and then you can type open settings and we're going to go with JSON. 
So open settings JSON once you press Control Shift P. This is going to be a special settings file for all of your Visual Studio Code settings. And in here, we just have to add a few adjustments. The only thing you have to do to make the autosave work is copy these few lines. Editor.codeActionsOnSave and then source.fixall.eslint is set to true. This block of code is going to be also linked below this lecture, so you can simply copy and paste it into your settings.json. I have a few extra settings not related to this, so don't worry about that. But one important one is show git folder. So what you can do is just simply type files.exclude asterisk asterisk forward slash dot git and then simply set it to false because by default a git folder is excluded but for some things that we're going to do we want to simply show it. Again both this block of code and this block of code is going to be linked below this lecture. Once you copy them and place them into your settings JSON if you press control save it should automatically fix all of the issues for you. Great. With that said, our ESLint setup is completely done. Think about it. We've had about three or four, let's call them mistakes, at least ESLint says that we can improve them in this small file of 10 lines. Once we start creating hundreds of files with hundreds of lines of code, think about how messy our code can get. ESLint also helps you minimize the redundancy in your code or fix some of your logical mistakes. So all in all, it's going to be a really useful piece of software that we're going to use straight inside of our Visual Studio Code. That was it for this lecture. And in the next one, I'm going to teach you how to set up a GitHub repository for this project. And we'll also be able to keep different versions of the same project. That way, you won't see the code that's going to be written in 100 lectures from now. You'll only see the one of the current lecture you're in. Great. So let's set up Git in the next lecture.